Alright, what I want to talk about is the one thing that you might be missing which is keeping you from being successful and that one thing that you may be missing is soul so what is soul? I mean it's a pretty abstract thing but let me give you an example you see someone who's successful and you can't pinpoint why for example they might they might be they might be a YouTuber, maybe you want to be like a YouTuber, you're making videos and you don't know why that person is more is much more successful and you're not getting anywhere near the success that that person's getting. Or it could be, you know, maybe something at work, maybe a talent, maybe a skill where you're imitating that person, you're doing everything that that other person's doing but it's just you're missing something and that is what I'm trying to explain as soul and I want to talk about how you can get soul how you can gain soul so welcome to my channel where we talk about bikes and Bible verses uh, today we're not talking about bikes um, we're gonna be talking about other stuff uh, how to get soul. So I'm going to give a few uh, points on what I believe is how you can get gain soul. The first point how you can not be an empty soul is by putting disciplines in your life. I honestly believe that having like disciplines or restrictions or self-imposed choices that you decide not to engage in uh, I think that is something that builds your soul I think it has this indirect um, effect on you on your behavior on your performance the way you look the way you talk to people um, confidence I think just like putting these disciplines putting these restrictions and one thing to note is you need to go in wholeheartedly. You can't, you can't say, oh, you know, I'll stop doing X, Y, Z, or I'll stop doing, I'll only do X, X, X for once every month. You've got to go wholeheartedly. You've got to, it's got to break you. You're going to say, you know, I decide not to do X, Y, Z, or XXX for the rest of my life like I decide to just not do it and you know you say I'm gonna dedicate my life to not doing it another example where you want to put something in your life is like a restriction type thing is you know you want to say you never want to lie you just decide that you never uh, want to tell a lie to someone and sometimes you are kind of forced maybe there's people around you who are trying to you know, encourage you to tell a lie to help them and, and you're kind of stuck now, you know usually, most of the time when you lie it comes back to you uh, so I think when that, there is that time when you decide not to lie but it's going to be really hard um, you know, you, you have to kind of clench and do it, but it's that's the sort of thing that builds your soul you know some people think well I'll, yeah you know I'll restrict it and I'll put these disciplines where I'm only restricting how much I'm doing that is not how you gain soul it is going to the extreme where it breaks you where you can't do it but you put in the effort and you f dedicate your whole life to sticking to you know these these rules that you've set and and of course you don't have to put restrictions on everything in your life you need some things to sort of unwind but you know you need to decide what's what's fruitful in your life and what isn't and what you want to get rid of so that was the first thing is to put disciplines and restrictions in your life and stick to it and work at it the second one 
uh, and this is talked about, uh, I've seen in other videos, and it's like, they say, don't try too hard. So, I think, uh, I kind of agree with what's out there in the mainstream. You know, people say, don't try too hard and it'll just come to you, but I think I have a little bit of a different approach. And, because I believe that to have soul, there are certain things that you do need to try really hard in and, and, and you know, no matter how much you try, it's still overwhelming for you and I still think that is part of gaining soul or being, you know, not being empty, not being an empty soul. Um, but, you know, why do people say don't try too hard? What I believe that is, is don't try hard on things that aren't fruitful uh, or that aren't really going to get you anywhere. You know, I believe that there are things in your life that you need to achieve and there are things in your life you're just wasting your time on. You know, one example of that is if, you know, if you know that there's an opportunity in life uh, and it's too hard, it's too overwhelming for you and you don't pursue it. Instead you're like, oh, well, I'll just go and do something else. I'll pursue something else. And you try really hard on that other thing, you know, it's just, it's just a mis misguided effort. It means don't waste your time on stuff that isn't going to build you up. And also trying too hard might be um, showing signs of desperation. So maybe it's you're trying too hard but it's a selfish motive. Uh, one example of a misguided effort is if anyone's been through childbirth, and obviously uh, I haven't, but I've been with someone who has, and so I can kind of feel, because I was kind of connected with that person, uh, to feel what they were going through, and it's like the contractions of childbirth. So during the contractions, they're overwhelming, they're very painful, overwhelming, and that is the time that you need to put the effort and push. But then, um, through sort of towards the end of labor, I don't know if people even realize this, the contractions actually start to go away and you know the baby might be like halfway out or something but it's not fully out and so now you're trying to push when there's no contraction and it's just the wrong time you're not getting anywhere and you're kind of wishing that the contractions came back or were stronger so that you can push at the right time so you know when they were there you were too overwhelmed and you didn't push hard enough um, but now that, you know, they're starting to go away, you haven't finished the job, but the contractions aren't there anymore, and you push at the wrong time. And that's kind of what I mean by misguided efforts. Third point in how to gain soul and, and how to not lose soul is... Uh, you, you, well, you will lose soul with selfishness when you pursue selfish things uh, that drains your soul you will become an empty soul and so you won't have anything to be successful with because you're an empty soul and that is when you're pursued by selfishness and the opposite to that where you can gain soul is when you pursue self selflessness so selflessness can be anything, can be, you know, obviously things that make a difference and have a purpose, but, you know, sometimes you can do a lot of selfless things which are really, you know, really take it out of you, really take your time, and, and sometimes you think, why am I doing this, I'm not gaining anything, but secretly, you know, in the invisible realm, you're gaining soul. You know, you're gaining the thing that other people, they, they don't have. And that other people, they can't see directly, but they can kind of see it in your personality, and, you know. So, so when you pursue selflessness, and when you reject selfishness, that's how you gain more soul. The fourth thing that causes you to lose your soul is pleasures. Just you know, wanting everything to be pleasurable, you know, eating too much sugar, eating too much junk foods, 
um, just ple- everything, everything being pleasurable, everything being a game. People need challenges in their life. People need adventure. You know, things where they're not sure where they're gonna be. I know life can be tough sometimes, um, but again, you know, life is precious. Life is valuable. We need to embrace life, um, no matter what we're going through. No matter even if it's tough sometimes. But I think it's worth it, and, and, and I believe in that divine, you know, I believe in that God that is that is there uh, to just uh, make sure everything is in check, even though it pushes us to beyond what we can handle, uh, or what seems that we can handle. Um, but I, I believe that that is kind of the destiny and the purpose of life. Sometimes you are pushed beyond what you think you can handle uh, but you you can handle it and it builds you up, it builds up your soul and when the opposite of pleasures is is suffering and when you suffer you sometimes call out to God for help and it's that connection that gives you soul Um, you know and it makes you appreciate um, you know appreciate life uh, so anyway, that's all I've got for today. Uh, we'll end with a Bible verse, and that's from Revelation chapter three, verse seventeen to nineteen. And it says that you say that you are rich and you've acquired a lot and you don't need anything, but you don't realize that you are wretched and poor and naked, and blind, and pitiful, and I beseech you to buy from me gold that's been purified with fire, and wear white clothes to cover your shamefulness, and to have eyes that can see, and I rebuke and discipline the ones that I love. So be earnest to repent. So anyway, that's uh, all I've got. Um, If you like my content, please hit the like button. If you have any comments, uh, please feel free. And uh, subscribe. And uh, take it easy and ride safe.